Hi, my name is Amberly, and I have the privilege of serving as one of our executive pastors here at Transformation Church. We just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are watching from. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word for you, so let's jump into this amazing message. Um, we're gonna jump into the word today. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. All right, we're in week 16. Somebody say 16. Week 16 of a series called Cuffing Season, the things you love that don't love you back. And uh, I'm going to read a, a, a portion of the Bible here. Luke 19 is what we're going to read. If you got your Bibles in the room, congratulations. You are a special Christian because you have a Bible that you don't need to charge. And uh, if your Bible needs a charge, I hope it don't die on you in your darkest moment. Anyways. <laughs> That happened to me one time. I was literally, I was like doing a wedding and the iPad died in the middle of the wedding. And I was like, so. <laughs> We're gathered here today in the sight of God. Anyways, I made it all up. Luke 19. They're still married today. Great wedding. God's blessing was on their marriage. So Luke 19, starting in verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name, Zacchaeus, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus, with a short self, quickly calmed down, took Jesus to his house with great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He's gone to be a guest of a notorious sinner? The people grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I'll give half my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated, People in their taxes, I'll give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today for this man himself, uh, this man himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. I'm going to pray just one more time as we get into the word of God. Holy Spirit, lead and guide us through this moment. We need to encounter you, your presence, your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And so I th pray that every distraction would be eliminated, that everything that would have us um, blocked from your spirit would be removed, and we would hear from you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Um, Luke. I love the book of Luke. It is a um, specific gospel. There's four gospels, and um, they are the same story four times over. If you read your Bible for your first time and you're like, what in the world is Jesus raised from the dead four times? No. Uh, it's the same story repeated over and over again. And Luke, a little context for him, he's a doctor. So Dr. Luke includes stuff that maybe other people wouldn't have included. And at this point in the story, uh, he has been portraying the life of Jesus and how Jesus has been establishing his kingdom on earth. That is all that Jesus preached, is the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So every story he tells, he's illustrating how the kingdom of God works, the intricacies, the simplicities. He's telling the people, hey, this is how I've worked, that you've heard a lot about me. There's been a lot of prophecies. There's been a lot of people telling you about me. But let me show you for myself what I'm about and what I do. And this story in Luke 19, it opens up and... Um, if you read it at face value, you miss a lot of context and a lot of detail. It opens up and it says, uh, Jesus is walking through Jericho um, and uh, there's a man. This man is Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Now, if you're anything like me, when you said Zacchaeus, a little song popped in your head. Anybody got the song in there? Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. Bah, bah. You know, see, thank you with the clap. That's what I'm talking about. All you other people didn't go up saved. It's okay. But I grew up saved. You hear what I'm saying? That's so bad. I, that just got that song stuck in my head. Zacchaeus, um, the story opens up and Jesus has a crowd packed around him. 
This is what happened when Jesus came on the scene. This is what happened when he went places. It's so funny to me that people say, I don't like big churches. I don't like when there's a lot of people. I just need a little amount of people. That's awesome. But if you was around Jesus back then, wherever his presence was, there was a lot of people. Wherever Jesus showed up, they didn't have Twitter. There wasn't somebody promoting and handing out invite cards. When God showed up, people surrounded him. When God's presence shows up, don't be surprised if people start coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. That's how he works. So there's a crowd around Jesus. It says Zacchaeus, um, he's the first introduction we get to Zacchaeus is uh, he is a chief tax collector. Now, I'm going to slowly walk you through this so you can understand uh, the implications of what Jesus does in the middle of this story. It says he's a chief tax collector. What we get first about Zacchaeus is that he is extremely successful. He's not just a tax collector. He's a chief tax collector. Now, a little context around tax collector. This is not just a random word that they would throw out. You see, at this time, the Roman government was oppressing people, and they needed to get their taxes. So what would they do? They would find somebody like Zacchaeus, who was a Jew, but found a way to work for the Roman government. So what is his job? The Romans come to him, and let's say this. They say, hey, we need $100 from this person in taxes. Whatever you get more than that, you can keep. Zacchaeus said, bet. (laughs) So Zacchaeus' job was to go up to people and lie about how much money they had to pay the government and take it from them. Walk up to the door, he knock on the door. Yeah, I'm here to get the money uh, for the government. How much you need? Let me see here. I got to get them 50. Uh, I need $180. 180 last year it was only 10. Yeah, sorry, homie. Prices just went up. I'm going to need that money. I'm going to need that quick. Boy, you better give me your money. His job was to walk around and lie and steal from his own people. That's who he was. At this time, even the word tax collector, it carried implications that would have put him amongst liars, thieves, and murderers. When Jesus says tax collector, it's not just like, oh, yeah, Uncle Sam, what's your money? No, 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 no. Think of the person you despise the most in your life. Get that person in your mind. This is Zacchaeus. He's a tax collector. He's super successful. The only problem is he's super short, which is probably why he was so successful. He's trying to make up for something. You know what I'm saying? But he's he's super successful, but he's short. He says there's a crowd, and he can't see Jesus. So he gets an idea. You know what? I'm going to run ahead of the crowd, and I'm going to climb a tree. Zacchaeus is up in his tree. He's like, all right, he's going to come by any second now. And when he comes by, I'm going to pounce on him. No, I'm just kidding. He just goes, hi Like straight Spider-Man, do the land and everything. He climbs up in a tree, and he's sitting in the tree waiting for his moment. And all the scripture says, it didn't say he was trying to talk to Jesus. All the scripture gives us is he wanted to see Jesus. He didn't have no plans of talking to him. He didn't have no plans of hanging out with him. The only thing in his mind was, I just want to see him. I just want I've heard about him. I've I heard a lot of people around me talk about him. But I want to see him for myself. The only problem is, people got in the way of him seeing Jesus. And that still happens today. There's people who want to see Jesus. They may not be living right. They might not be doing all the right things, but there's something on the inside that's just curious. But it says the crowd, the people who got close to Jesus, he couldn't get around him. He couldn't see around him. So he decided, I'll run ahead. And the scripture says this. He climbed a tree for Jesus was going to pass that way. Jesus comes walking with the crowd. And Zacchaeus is like, oh, okay. You're a little shorter than I thought you'd be, but, you know. Oh, wow. You ain't white like in all the pictures. That's crazy. (laughs) Sorry, I can't say that. Some of y'all got a white Jesus. That's not what he looked like. Anyways, 
<laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> you didn't know. He didn't have blue eyes. That's wild. Anyways. Non-white Jesus walks by and... <laughs> And he stops. And Zacchaeus is like, I timed this perfectly. <laughs> what are the chances he stops right under my tree? I'm the goat. I got all this money. I'm a chief tax collector. And I timed and picked the perfect tree. Jesus was going to stop by. I knew it. Ha ha. He stopped right in front of my tree. He's standing there. And then Jesus looks up. And I always picture this moment in the Bible like, what is a really short guy doing up in a tree? How do you respond? Like, <clears throat> oh, hey, what's, how you doing? Man? Yeah. <clears throat> what's up? Hey, what's up, G? Hey. Shoot, man, what, what am I doing in this tree? <clears throat> Jesus, you know. You know, I be chilling. You know what I'm saying? I just be chilling up in trees sometimes. It's no big deal. <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy. Now, there's a lot of people around you. That's why. Because Zacchaeus was super cool in my mind. Like, Zacchaeus was wearing Timberlands just like me. He was, like, just chilling. And he's sitting there, and he's like, yo, Zacchaeus, I want to go to your house. Zacchaeus, look, you want to go to my house? You sure you? Ben. Hold on. And it says Zacchaeus comes down real quick down the tree. Come down. It says he's super joyful. Now, Zacchaeus is super gassed that Jesus is coming to his house. But all the church people do not feel the same way. Wait, you going to his house? Jesus, do you know who that is? Do you know what they said? Do you know what they did? Do you know who they slept with? Do you know the diseases they got? Do you know that they married to you? You know they, this is actually the third marriage. and I, now, that, now, how do I know that? It's not important how I know that, but... Jesus, you go to, you, you go to bad people's houses? And at this point in the sermon, I want to come bust up some of your perceptions on whose house Jesus would or would not be in in our present day. Because some of y'all think your good deeds warrants Jesus coming to your house and not those bad people's houses. Jesus, you, why would you go to their house? You see all the good stuff I'm doing over here? You surely would not go to this notorious sinner's house. And Jesus, in the middle of that crowd, comes to bust up all the religion. And what he is saying by saying, I want to come to your house, this is not just simply I'm inviting myself over for a game night. Eating dinner at someone's house represented in the context of that time one of the most intimate things of acceptance you could do. And Jesus comes into the earth to say this, I go to bad people's houses. You see how quiet that is? Because your rules and your list of good deeds can't make sense of the fact that Jesus goes to bad people's houses. Reading the scripture, who he is, yeah, on your list, Jesus wouldn't go to his house. Jesus wouldn't spend time with him. Jesus wouldn't be seen with him. But Jesus comes to bust up all of the rules to say, hey, I don't care about your list of good deeds. I don't care about the law that you're keeping. I am grace in the flesh, and I will choose whose house I want to go to. I appreciate your golf claps. But this would actually be good news to you if you realized you was a bad person. The problem is you think you're on the good list. Ha! I'm going to stand back here because some of y'all are trying to punch me from your seat. The problem is you think, oh, I've done a lot of good things, so I'm a good person. So Jesus goes to good people's houses, but he don't go to bad people's houses. No, 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 baby. The good news is that all of us are bad people. And God chooses to show his grace, his mercy, on his love. See, some of y'all, when I started reading Zacchaeus, y'all thought, I already heard this story. And I know I'm not Zacchaeus. Oh, 
you don't know Romans 3.23. For all have fallen. <laughs> you Zacchaeus. <laughs> you thought you was in the crowd? Oh, no, no, no. We all love to climb trees to make sure Jesus can see us. Today, the title of my sermon, if you're taking notes, is Cuffed to Climbing. You see, all of us in some area fall short. All of us in some area are trying to compensate for that thing that we don't have. All of us in some area have some things in our life that didn't go how we thought they were going to go. And so we start performing. We start climbing ladders to show Jesus, hey, look over here. Maybe you ain't performing for Jesus, but you're performing so you can get married. Look over here. Look, look at me. Maybe you're not performing for that. Maybe there's some area where if you were honest, you find yourself in a tree. And you think when Jesus stops under your tree, that it's because you timed it and picked it perfectly. You see, I haven't missed a church service in 42 years. So that's why Jesus always shows up. You see, I haven't missed the U version scripture, and my streak is 962. So Jesus always stops under my tree. I lifted my hands in worship. So much better than that other person next to me. They were balled up on the floor, probably because they've got a lot of sin in their life. But Jesus always stops under my tree. Oh, you think, <laughs> you think, you think he stopped at the tree because it's easy to see a short man in a tree? See, what you don't realize is a short man climbing up in a tree full of leaves would be harder to see. It was convenient for him to see Jesus, but all of your climbing muddies up where you actually are. Oh, okay, let me, oh, Jesus. Some of y'all so nervous. It's okay. It's just a ladder. For all have fallen short. Climbing, because I see some of y'all looking at me like, I, I still don't see the connection. What is climbing? Climbing is using effort and activity to achieve a higher position or status. Cuffed to climbing. Cuffed to using energy and activity to achieve a higher position or status. And I've learned the only way you keep climbing is to stay reaching. And if we were to look at your life, it's a lot of reaching. It's a lot of, ooh, it's, it's, it's a lot of performing for certain people. It's a lot of imaginary list in your head of who's right and wrong. It's a lot of climbing, maybe not the tree, but maybe you're climbing the corporate ladder. Well, I didn't get recognized as a child because I didn't have enough and I didn't like how it felt when everybody else got new school clothes and I didn't get school clothes. So I'm going to make sure that I go to this college that I make a certain amount of money so I don't ever have to depend on anybody. Yeah, I know people lay that as an entrepreneur. It's just another tree. You're really, you're really performance-based in the way, and it comes out as super successful. It comes out as super funny. Some of y'all, you wasn't funny growing up, but you found out that funny gets attention. So you have climbed a tree of sarcasm and humor and stand up as a means to be higher than where you actually are. 
as a means to disguise what's really going on, as a means to, to hide the fact that if you were to come down off of your tree, it would get real embarrassing real quick. And I don't like how it feels down there. I don't like the way people look at me when I'm down there. Go into Zacchaeus' life. You want to know why he's so successful? Let me give you a little context that just astounded me. I did some research on what would have been the average height of a man during this time. Based on the size of door frames that would have been built, because they would have framed up like, okay, if you're building a house this big, this gives us a ratio of where people are. The average door entrance was like five foot ten, five foot eleven. So if he's a short man back then, he's short, short. But being up in this tree is where I feel safe. And the most beautiful thing about this whole story, um, it gets to a point in the story where there's just radical generosity. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But today, um, I want to talk about the invitation of Jesus if you find yourself in a tree. I don't know what your tree is. I don't know why you're climbing. I don't know why people's opinion has so much weight in your life. I don't know why you present a certain way at church and then you go in your car and act totally different around your family. I don't know what your tree is. I don't know why you're climbing. But the invitation of Jesus is he stops under your performance and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. Those two words are the message God told me to tell you. Come down. I don't know who told you you had to do all that to get my attention. Come down. I don't know where it was said to you that Jesus only sees people if they're up in a tree, if they're making up for their bad issues. I don't know where you heard that, but Jesus comes to you today and he says, come down. Some of you, your tree makes you feel better than other people. And some of you, if you're honest, you're not worried about being higher in your tree. You're hiding up in your tree. You ran, you saw the anointing that was on your life. And you said, I am not coming down. Come down and love those people. Uh-uh. Come down and write that book. Uh-uh. Come down and, no, 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 not going to. Come down and step into ministry. No way, Jose. Come down out of your alco alcoholism. No way. Nope, 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 nope. I feel safe up here. I feel comfortable up here. And I am good. I'm honestly good where I'm at. Thank you, Jesus, though. Just come down. No, I, it's all right. I've, I've been up here for so long that I'm not sure if I got down, I would even know how to operate. I've been a people pleaser so long that I'm not sure if I came down, I would know how to operate. I've been a womanizer so long that I'm not sure if I gave myself to one woman that I would know what intimacy feels like. I've been ruled by culture so long that I'm not sure I would know what to do if God put me in a position to stand up against culture and love people. So I'll just stay safe in my tree. And here's the thing about coming out of your tree. There is a time period between being at the top of your tree and being out of your tree where it looks a little awkward. And this is the season some of y'all are in. You're actually going to counseling and dealing with your childhood trauma that puts you up in the tree. And now it's like, okay, let me just... What you doing? Oh, just transforming in Christ. <laughs> just, ha, ah, ah. ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, just dealing with some wounds from childhood and why we all act like we love each other and won't address real issues. Don't worry about me. Oh, okay. You know what? Never mind. I'm good. I'm good. I went to a few counseling sessions. That's not for me. It's too much. 
I went to that church. They tried to get up in my business. They asked me to give. I'll give when I want to give. Tell God that, okay? I'm going to stay up in my tree. I've been up in this tree so long. Some of y'all live in a tree house. You got a kitchen up there. You got a bedroom up there. You got a... You done built space for your children to stay up in your tree. Oh, sorry. Generational curses. That's what I meant to say. You, your whole family live up here. We don't, we don't talk to people like that. We don't deal with people like that. We don't ever serve because we did that season. We don't ever ask for help because we got to a point where we don't need nobody else. We just stay. Don't do that. Why would you not go to college? Why would you go to college? Why would you do that? Why would you? We're safe up here. And some of y'all, God is saying, hey, um, I know you're comfortable up there. But if you, if you want, I'd love to get this. I'd love to just come to your house. You thought that you had to do all that up here to be seen by me. I, I just want to come to your house. You see, when you're climbing, you have to stay reaching. And what I've realized is um, a lot of us have failed to realize that religion keeps you reaching. That's what the law is, is a reach. Ten Commandments, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. Okay, I got to make sure I don't do this. I got to make sure I follow this rule. I got to make sure I don't do that. I got to make sure I do this. Righteousness, according to the New Testament, is not about reaching. It's about receiving. And here's where the story gets crazy. You want to know what Zacchaeus' names mean? Zacchaeus means righteous. That's why you got to read your Bible. So when Jesus, before he says, come down, the scripture says he called him by name. Before Jesus makes you do anything, he gives you a new identity. Oh, this is so good theology. Before Jesus makes you do anything, he says, I know when I say Zacchaeus, they going to think a lot of stuff. They're going to think liar. They're going to think manipulator. They're going to think, oh, he's short. They're going to think they're defined by that past season. They're going to think that one who was in that addiction. I know that that's what's going to think. But only Jesus and Zacchaeus knew who he really was. And Jesus says, I know you're comfortable in your tree. But righteousness, come down. Who you really are in me. Not all this activity, not chief tax collector, not CEO, not mom, not dad, not business owner, not college athlete. Forget all that. I don't care about that. Zacchaeus, come down. Come down, come down, come down. You don't have to do all that. I don't know who told you you had to do all that to get his attention. But the text is very clear. Jesus was going to pass that way. He didn't stop under your tree because you timed it perfectly. He stopped under your tree because before the foundations of the earth were formed, he knew you. He saw you. He had a plan and purpose for your life. And somehow you preach these scriptures. You're like, yeah, 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 you know, Jesus. It just, no, no, no. Jesus was coming to bust up all their ideas, even Zacchaeus's. And he says, I want to I go to your house. And it's crazy to me that some of us have been cuffed to the idea that your works is what moves God or not. This is messing with you. And that's my primary role in the earth, and I'm very sure of it, is to mess with stuff that Jesus did not say. He did say Without, faith, without works, faith is dead. But it doesn't say without works, faith is dead. 
There's a priority. There's an order. Without faith first, then comes the works. You think I work really hard, then I get something from God. That's how your parents taught you. That's how your teacher taught you. That's not what Jesus said. He says, I will come find you up in your tree, up in your performance, up in your ideas, up, and I will invite you, come down. Why? Because I want to go to your house. I want to get in the intimate space with you. I want to talk about why are you up in that tree. I want to talk about why you haven't let anybody get close to you in five years. I'm not worried about what the crowd is saying. I want to come to your house. I'm not worried about why you're doing all of that. I just want to come to your house. We serve a God who is not concerned with how high you are up in your tree. He says, come down for today. I have to go to your house. I got to. I got to go to Zacchaeus' house. I got to go for his sake, and I got to go for everybody else's sake to know the God I am. I am the God that is not concerned with your performance. I am the God who is not concerned with all the good or bad things you have done. I will choose to show grace on who I show grace to, and I want to come to your house. Now, I want to stay there, but there's an insane response when Jesus comes to your house. And this will explain a lot of the crazy Christian people around you. This will explain my life. This will explain to you why people, I'm about to help you so much, why you feel that need to give money away, why you're so generous. It's when you realize that you were a short person up in a tree and Jesus, the Savior of the world, stopped everything and said, I want to go to your house. Picture this. Zacchaeus is sitting at his long gangster table with all his homies and they're just chilling. The first part of the dinner in my head is uh, Zacchaeus trying to impress Jesus. He's like, yeah, 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 bring out the charcuterie. Bring out the sparkling water. You know what I'm saying, Jesus? Get you some of this Ciroc. I mean, just kidding, Jesus. You, don't, you drink wine? I don't, you did that trick at the party. I don't know if you, okay. You drink, you, did, you do red wine? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Well, just, okay. Um, and he's chilling with his homies. He's in the house. And then the scripture says, all of a sudden, we don't get no details of the story. Which I love because some of us would try to turn it into like a discipleship program. That like you try to do these three things and then Jesus will deliver you. No, 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 no. We don't get the details of it. Because when Jesus starts transforming you, it's just between him and you. You ain't got to explain it to a bunch of people. It ain't got to make sense how he did it for them. It ain't got to be in a certain timeline that they put on you. When Jesus shows up to your house, stuff starts changing. And all of a sudden, the story says Zacchaeus just stands up. He's like, um, um, I have an announcement. And his homies are like, what is he? Did, did he drink that whole bottle of what is, you know, Zach B. Wild? And he's like, ah, oh, I, an, I have an announcement. I'm going to give all my stuff away. And they're like, what, what, do you, what do you mean you're going to give? Why are you giving your stuff? And if I've ever stolen from anybody, which, pause. Zach, the only reason you got money (laughs) is because of the the, the situation of your whole job. The only way you got money was from from stealing. That's not important, man. Jesus is here. I'm going to give it all away. And everything I've found value in, it don't matter no more. Because I was up in a tree. How long had it been since somebody said his name? Think of his interactions. Oh, you again? Here you go. Just take it. Hey, I'm here to get, yeah, I know. Here you go. Just take it. Hey, I'm here to get the, yeah, I know. But Jesus said, Zacchaeus. Hey, man, I know, I know people like me aren't supposed to hang out with people like you. And Zacchaeus is experiencing the only reasonable response to extravagant grace. 
and it is extravagant generosity. It only makes sense. Jesus came to my house. Some of you forgot who you were before Jesus just used to be pulling up to your house. Some of y'all had Jesus in your house for so long, you forgot the tree he found you in. Some, let me be clear. He, you forgot the bed he found you in. You forgot the addiction he found you in. You forgot in the manipulation he found you in. If it had not been for Jesus, you would still be out on the street. If it had not been for Jesus, you would still be doing anything for a dollar. If it had not been for Jesus, you would still be judging people. If it had not been for Jesus... Don't be sitting up in your house acting like, yeah, it's always been like this. I've always been holy. I've always been saved. I've always had a lot of money. Yeah, our marriage has always been good. Forget that. Jesus saw you in your tree, and he said, come down. And the response to extravagant grace is always extravagant generosity. I'm not just talking about with money. This is not a message to try to get nobody's money. Don't nobody want your money. God wants your heart. He don't want just a part of you. He wants all of you. And some of you hear something I'll say that don't make no sense when it comes to offering time. Some of you give money as a means to keep God away from, from the real stuff he wants. Some of y'all put $1,000, $10,000 in the offering bucket and God ain't produced no fruit of the spirit in your life in 20 years. Stop giving the money and give all of yourself to him and let him transform the way you talk to your wife talking about I gave a thousand dollars forget your money you acting the same you rude you ain't kind ain't nobody seen no fruit in your life keep your stinky dollar and transform your life and follow Jesus you think this is about money this ain't about money get out of here why are they doing that offering it seemed like they really want don't nobody wants your money God wants your life bro get out of here I feel like Russell Westbrook, what are you talking about? Like, what are you, t you think I want money? The streets are gold in heaven. Get the heck out of here. He don't need your money. We make church about some dumb stuff. Just up here like the church just wants your money and they're just trying to make you be, get out of here. When Jesus shows up to your house, money ain't nothing. Woo, I almost said a cuss word I'm not going to. You really out here acting like Jesus ain't pulling up to your house when you was real, 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 real short, acting crazy, talking to people sideways, and he said, come out of your tree. I want to spend time at your house. He ain't concerned with your tree. He ain't concerned with your activity. He's not concerned with how good of a person you are. All have fallen short. All. All. Everybody, no matter how long you've been following Jesus, no matter how new you are to following Jesus, we are all on the same playing field. Jesus calls all men out of their tree. You ain't got to climb that tree, Zacchaeus. You ain't got to climb that tree, daughter. You ain't got to climb that tree, son. I don't know who told you that, but you ain't got to do that. You want to know why? You know why Jesus told Zacchaeus to come down? Zacchaeus, you weren't made to be up in a tree. You come down because there's only one person this tree is made for. 2,000 years ago, Jesus climbed the last tree that would ever need to be climbed. And he stretched out his arms and he said, it is finished. They ain't got to climb no more trees. They don't have to perform for my love. They don't have to be a certain type of person for me to love them. Jesus climbed the tree so you would never have to. You weren't made for that tree. You weren't made for that performance. You weren't made for that activity. You weren't made for that. That's why it's questioning you. He climbed the tree so you wouldn't have to. Yo, 
You'll always feel uncomfortable in that tree because you weren't made for a tree. You were not made to be up in that tree. You weren't made to perform. You weren't made to do all this good stuff for God. You were simply made and created to be with God. And Jesus calls you out of the position where you think you're Savior. Up in your tree like, I'm a good person. I'm up here saving. No, 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 no. There's only one person that climbs trees in my life. And he already did it. Cuffed to climbing. I'm not sure why you're in your tree. I'm not sure what circumstances led to you being here. I'm not sure what pain, what addictions, what insecurities you've been trying to compensate for. So you've produced a lot of activity and a lot of goodwill and a lot of deeds. But I want you to know the invitation of Jesus is come down. I'm going to invite the band and the worship team to come back up. Um, that was a bigger step than I thought it was. <laughs> it was a lot bigger. I almost lost my life. You almost saw it. <laughs> Did you see that? I literally was like, come down. I'm simply asking you to uncuff from your climbing and just surrender to the call. Just receive, receive the call. That's the, only, that's, that's the big decision before you. You don't have to climb anymore. You don't have to be up in your tree Make sure I go to this college, and I make sure I get the scholarship, and I gotta make sure I do this, and I gotta make sure I do, and I gotta make sure. I gotta, I gotta. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? This ain't me talking. This is Matthew twenty-eight. Come away with me. Work with me. Watch me. Walk with me. This is the invitation of Jesus. Matthew 28. He says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Get away with me and I will give you rest for your soul. That tree can't save your soul. That performance ain't going to save your soul. The invitation of Jesus is if you're tired of climbing trees... If you're tired of performing for people, performing for your family, performing for if you're tired of that, and you simply want to spend time in the arms of Jesus, come down. There are two responses in this room. There are some of you that it's time to get out of your tree. And when I say tree, only you know what that is. I could go through a long list of stuff that could be a possible thing you're climbing, but only you know what you're doing to try to get attention from people, to try to get attention from God, to try to cover up the insecurities and the vulnerability. Only you know that. And it's time to get out of the tree it's time to come down and the word over your life is God says hey righteousness let me give you scriptural backup for that for he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of Christ 
He calls you down out of your tree. Some of you need to get out of your tree. And some of you, God came to your house. And you feel, and this is, there is zero, hear me say this clearly. There is zero pressure. Some of you, this next moment, I'm just going to ask the worship team to sing. And some of you, as you sit and think about the tree he called you out of, the only response that's going to rise up out of you is this extravagant sacrificial gift that is just like I don't I don't want it anymore I don't I don't know why I don't know why I don't need it and some of you it may not be money some of you very practically the worship teams will come up they're gonna sing and as we sing we have spots all the way around this room for you to give some of you this is the moment you came for to give in the crazy faith offering then you've planned it and you're ready for it some of you you're, you weren't even thinking about that you just came with a friend and you was like yeah I'm gonna go check this church out and you're sitting in here and you realize like oh my gosh he's been at my house oh my gosh he he transformed my life oh my gosh I used to be addicted to medication and I'm not anymore oh my gosh I used to be concerned with people's opinion and I live free and confident and the only response is going to be I just I don't need it I don't I don't need it anymore there's a lot of things happened in my life but in 2020 I found myself curled up under my desk ready to take my own life. And the invitation of Jesus was come down. So now, no matter what I have, I just, I don't need it. It's just like, yeah, if you want my money, if you want my car, if you want my job, if you want my relationship, like in light, of how exhausted I was up in my tree. <laughs> Money, things, clothes, perk. You can have it all. I'm going to ask everybody in this room to stand. Two groups of people I want to pray for. There's a group of you that need to come off of your tree, come down from your tree. And this is really just going to be a surrender to God. It's going to be a moment where you just simply surrender. You're going to say, I'm done climbing. I'm done performing. I'm done trying to earn God's love. I'm done trying to earn people's love. I'm done trying to do, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm coming out of my tree. And as this worship begins to be lifted up to our God, some of you are going to become more free than ever before. We're just about done in our service. I'm going to ask if it's not an emergency that you don't leave because this is an important moment. We understand if you have to go. But there are some of you that this is what you came for. This is all you needed was the invitation that you ain't got to do all that. You don't have to perform. You don't have to act. You can come out of your tree. In just a moment, when we begin to sing, I'm just going to ask you to lift your hands and just let God talk to you. I'm not going to say nothing. The worship team's going to sing over your life, but we're not going to perform. We're just going to simply receive. We're not reaching anymore. We are receiving the righteousness of Christ. Some of you, it's coming out of your tree. Others, you, you're going to have an opportunity to give. The ushers are at your row. If you need a crazy faith offering, if you need anything, they can get that to you. But when the worship team begins to sing, some of you, you already decided in your heart. You showed up today knowing, I didn't get to do it last week, but I'm doing this week. And the ushers will guide you on where to go to give. But in this moment, both people are getting freedom. Some of you are getting freedom because you realize that you ain't got to be up in your tree. And some of you are getting freedom because you're remembering how good God has been to you. God, right now, we are surrendering to you. We're surrendering, Lord God. We're surrendering our will. We're surrendering our way. We're surrendering our deeds. We're surrendering our actions. And we are, God, there are two people in here. God, there are people who need to come out of their tree, come out of their performance, come out of their good deeds, come out of the stuff that they've been doing, Lord God, to get your attention, to get people's attention. Lord God, I thank you that the power of your grace would invite them out of their tree and they would simply surrender to you. Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, even 
as your presence is filling this room yet again, I thank you, Lord God, that chains are falling off, that mindsets are falling off. Things that have kept people bound are breaking in the name of Jesus. We are uncuffing from climbing and we are answering the call of God on our life. I thank you that there's callings being spoken out right now. Some of you, God is affirming things in your life right now. I thank you that this moment solidifies families and generations coming out of their tree and lord i pray right now lord god as we begin to worship there are people who are going to give in faith even online some of you maybe you weren't prepared already but in this moment you can go online and you can give there is zero pressure this is between you and god it is a response when you realize how good he has been to you to give it all away lord god we love you lord god we trust you and we continue to lift up the gracious and good name of jesus all around this room you can begin to give if you want to give if you just need to sit and surrender i'm going to ask our team to lead us in this song and we are going to receive the righteousness of christ come on all around this room let's worship god oh, say your promises always come true not depending on me but rely on you your mercies are new every day so I will trust you. Come on, sing it out of stand. Your promises always come true. Not depending. Not depending on me, but relying on you. so clear he's saying this next season is gonna feel like a trust fall I don't know if you remember in in PE at my school they would do this thing Osby can you come here you gonna catch me by the way I'm gonna catch me I will do this thing called a trust fall and the way a trust fall works is you gotta look this way you can't worry about what's behind you 
You can't work. You can't have a bunch of plan B's and always the, some of you, your relationship with God has been you looking over your shoulder. Just make, make sure he got me. Make sure I'm good. Don't like, I want to make sure that I, this next season of coming out of your tree, it's going to be able to say, God, you are the only person I look to. No matter what comes, no matter what goes. No matter how much money I have in the bank, no matter how my relationships look, no matter how I feel, God, I trust. I, I trust you. Now there's a moment in the trust fall where even though I called Osby up here to do it, I thought, brother, you better, please don't. And some of you, that's where you find yourself. God, I gave this money and I, I just, if you, God says, you can trust me. I've never let anybody down. If you look back over your life, he has never let you down. God, I thank you that you are a God we can trust. You are a God worthy of putting our hope in you. You're a God worthy of putting our faith in you. You're a God worthy of putting our strength in you. God, we trust you. There's some people in this room, we're about to close service, watching online, that you need to put your life in Jesus. You need to surrender and give your life to Jesus and accept the finished work of salvation. The gospel is very clear that Jesus came to this earth. He lived a sinless and perfect life. He died on a cross for you and for me to save us from our sin. What is sin? Sin is an archery term. It means to miss the mark. I said it earlier, all have fallen short. But when you accept Jesus, it accepts the finished work of you having right standing or righteousness with Christ. All you got to do is surrender. I'm going to count to three in this room and online. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand on the count of three. Some of you, this is the first time. And some of you are rededicating your life to him. One, he loves you. Two, he is so proud of you. Three, lift your hand right now if you want to accept Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As a community around the world, would you repeat this prayer after me? Say, dear God, thank you for loving me. Dear Jesus, I admit I've made mistakes. Save me, change me, transform me. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, can we make some noise for people who just gave their life to Jesus? Hey, listen, if you made that choice, it's the best decision you could ever make. We would love to know about it online, in the room. If you text the word SAVED to the number 828282, we just want to send you some resources. We want to know about it. I want to encourage you, share it with somebody. Man, it is the best decision. And as a church, we're so proud of you. Hey, listen, I'm so grateful to be a part of a church um, that is fixed on one thing, and that is Jesus. And uh, I want to encourage you, man, continue to share what God is doing, not just here, but in your own life. As you share your testimony, if you share what God's doing, it'll make a massive difference in the earth. We're so grateful for you. I want to encourage you to join us back next week um, and uh, as we finish out our series, and then we go into Christmas time. We have a service on the 22nd we'd love you to be a part of. But until then, we say it all the time. Say it with me. Go out and live a transformed life. We'll see you. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. Our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And if you would like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or visit us on our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons as well. Our service begins every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.